Well, um, hello and welcome to Judge a Book by its Cover. This is an event for Open Books and um, it's all about covers, design, production, things like that. Um, I'm Jack Knoll, I'm an author and illustrator and I've done some kids books. I've done books like uh, My Head Teacher's an Evil Genius and some colorful classics with lots of pictures inside. Um, and I'm also an art director. I work at Anderson Press, which is a kind of children's publisher. So art directors, we um, look after the covers and the look of the, all the books and just in charge of the general feel of the covers, the insides, things like that. Um, and today I'm delighted to be holding a conversation with two very talented people from the industry. But before we get started, I'm gonna tell you a bit about Open Books. Open Books will be bringing an exciting selection of online events and short videos introducing you to careers in the book industry. It will show you how you can put your interests, passions and creative skills to work, whether it be art and design, business acumen or worldwide travel and languages. We'll also be diving deeper into some of the jobs in the book industry you might already know about, such as an editor, being an editor or in areas like marketing and publicity. Um, so and what we're doing today is design. It's called Judge a Book by its Cover. So it's the colourful world of art, design, production. Um, it's my favourite bit. I liked it a lot. I think it's pretty fun. It's definitely visible. So we're going to look at like how the design process works, what's the point of a book cover, who makes the decisions and how they're actually made. So I'm joined by two people who know all about art and design and production. And I'll start by asking you both to introduce yourselves. Ebian, can you start? Thank you, Jack. Um, my name's Ebian and my pronouns are she, her. So I work for Penguin as a studio manager and within Penguin, one of our divisions or one of the groups within Penguin called Cornerstone. So we publish a range of, I say adult books, so, but books range for anything above 16 and above. And we have various imprints and various kind of books that we publish. So we publish books by world leading political figures, including our uh, London Mayor Sadiq Khan, from so it's a regular or oh, quite big musical artists such as Bonin most recently, Bill Smith, which is just behind me in terms of authors. And we even have a dedicated imprint by Stormsea called Murky Books, which is dedicated to publishing books by underrepresented or particularly writers from Black, Asian, minority ethnic backgrounds. And most recently, one of the books that we published there was Mallory Blackman, the leading children's laureate of Knots and Crosses. My role, particularly in the design team, is I'm studio manager. As a studio manager, I, I'm not a designer, but I work within the design team in terms of a more organisational role, so making sure that briefs, so everything, whether covers, process is being met, and working alongside the various teams in the group, such as the editorial, production, finance, the MD, and so just having regular communication with everyone and making sure that the designers have everything they need to produce beautiful covers. Great, and then we've also got Robin here as well. Hello, thanks Jack. Um, I'm Robin and my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a senior production controller at HarperCollins Publishers. Uh, I work primarily with Harper Voyager, which is our fantasy imprint, um, and Magpie Books, which will also be launching soon. And that's why I an adult fantasy. And I specialize in the production of high spec special editions at this point. Um, we produce a lot of books for subscription boxes and waterstones that have all these beautiful sprayed edges. So that's really a lot of what I do at the moment. Uh, so yeah, that's briefly about me. And Evian, you told you mentioned that you start with briefs. Could you tell us a bit more about the cover design process and how it goes from, from the beginning to the to the end? Absolutely. So within various book industry publishers, there might be different briefs in terms of, from, particularly in the division I work with, where we, pub, or where we publish particularly black and white books, so books without any illustration in them. We have covers, so when we have a pub date, and I say it's publishing in 2024, we'll have the covers briefed a year ahead of that publication date. So the editor will be in charge of briefing the covers. And sometimes they might work quite closely with the design team, particularly if a designer has worked on a book, such as a kind of a more regular series of a book but the editor will put together a brief of what the book is about. So just a general page outline of what the book is about, a brief subtitle if needed, particularly if it's nonfiction, some cover competitions, so books within the market, or if it's published before other books in that series, books maybe to follow in that same style, just a general suggestion of what might be included. So if it's a book on perhaps Will Smith, such as this one here, it might be a case of briefing an illustrator to produce a slightly different 
reinterpretation of Bill Smith rather than a photographic approach in this instance. And at times where, in this case particular, sometimes we might get covers directly from the US. So we work quite closely with the US publishers as well to make sure that we know if particularly, particularly if, if someone's being commissioned to work, produce this cover, that they might actually decide in the briefing meeting to let us know that we might wait for the US approach or what the US are working on. So to follow in some of the styles um, or to use their cover directly as an adapt or reinterpretation. Yeah, great. Did you work on that Will Smith cover? Sadly, the cover was done before I joined or was kind of right. from the US, but kind of worked on kind of slightly towards the end of it. So getting it to production like closely with our director who was adapting the cover for the UK edition. Yeah. So the brief was set about you know where the book should sit alongside in, in, the, in the shop or in the, on the online retailer. So do you feel like you have to be a, like in tune to trends, design trends and broad trends? Absolutely. I think it's quite, especially with the design team, it's regular kind of keeping going to bookstores and seeing what other books within that market. And I think particularly going around various bookshops, something I love doing on the weekend. So just having a look, maybe if particularly, so at times I might commission designers or illustrators to work on covers as well. So I might go in to market to supermarkets or different bookshops to have a look at what is in that market so perhaps so even though the editor is working on the brief so they might have briefed it and just to kind of actually go back to the process when the cover is briefed it'll go to a meeting so within that meeting will be various people such as our managing director the marketing team so various sales as well who will have indication of what's work in the market and the design design team particularly the art director will input into that brief so they might also give suggestions of what might work or might not necessarily work and so in terms of especially I think with social media being something quite kind of developing over the last three years going on Instagram and Twitter is quite key as well to see the different trends around yeah I find yeah going in bookstores is invaluable being online is really key and it's not just the design of the books it's the design of all the other properties that people will be consuming like stuff that you get from Netflix and um you know title designed even the way that like instagram ui or tiktok is looking in different ways that people are just arranging and viewing the world or just even travel just coming i think coming today on the team there'll be different posters around so kind of seeing even if something like a car advertisement as you said kind of how different design lends itself is quite interesting yeah and robin do you find that as well because production techniques from the book world often or you know, use things that are working well in advertising and product as well. Yeah, definitely. Like I was saying, um, special editions are very much present at the moment. I think there was a time where we all thought the ebook was the future and nobody would want beautiful books. And actually kind of the opposite is happening. People are buying books because they look beautiful and it's kind of just a race to keep keep going and so you can have the best finishes. So I definitely think sp sprayed edge, there was a time when seeing a sprayed edge in a bookshop was amazing, like a block colour on a sprayed edge. Everyone was like, oh my goodness, I have to have it. And now you've got these beautiful, intricate designs. I've got some examples here um, that we've done. So these are fairy loot editions and we've got these beautiful four edge colour edges, um, which just make the books even more special as a, as a whole package. Um, and this is often what, what gets featured on um, Bookstagram, as we were talking about. and just yeah it's it's creating this visual aesthetic it's not just reading for pleasure it's taking photographs of it it's creating this this whole feed of images that reflect your view of reading and yeah it's really interesting how people interpret them differently so book production can really help the book become an object that people really want to own yeah i think so um it's it's always down to sort of the editors and the designers visions but i think our job is to facilitate that and there's what budget comes into play and um sometimes I've get I get designers that just the foiling is just so what makes the yeah it's foil basically it makes the book look shiny um sometimes it's so detailed and the way that foiling works is it's essentially a hot stamp and it expands slightly so I have designers that just love to push the limit and I'm like can we just make it a little bit bigger so that we don't lose the detail um but it's amazing what they can do now but yeah definitely having that knowledge and collaborating with designers and editors to get the best product at the end is good. So will you consult with them and talk about what would work? And Yeah, definitely. I get designers um, ask me, you know, what do you think? And if I'm not sure, I go to the printer and they've got even more expertise and then I can learn and then keep that in the back catalogue for the next book that comes up. And I'm like, oh, we dealt with that before. So 
this is how we got around it last time. Um, so I'm constantly learning new things. So some of the big hits in, in production at the moment, four edge printing or sprayed mm -hmm. edges, like when you've got the colour on, yes. on the other side of the book, opposite the mm -hmm. spine, which doesn't, we used to be just a solid colour, but now it can be printed. Uh -huh. And then you'd have foil, which is like, yeah, silvery or gold foil, which is like stamped I mean, on. any colour, yeah. And then on the cases as well, that's become a new thing where the, they want the case to be special underneath the book as well. I'm trying to think what I've got here. So I've got an example here of the book eaters. <laughs> underneath it underneath the jacket itself we've got an alternative cover so it's just giving you more more of the book yeah i love that yeah that's nice. really good and robin did you always always know you're going to be in the production person quite early on when i decided to work in the book industry i definitely say so um i was coming towards the end of my undergraduate degree and i knew i wanted to work in the book industry but i did not want to be an editor because i would not make a very good one um but I love books. So I did um, a short course called Get Into Book Publishing. And right. it offered an insight into every area of the book industry from, from anything inside and outside. So publishing recruitment, design, paper mills, all of this. Um, and we got to the production section and the teacher gave us a book and a Stanley knife. And we had to dissect this book. And everyone thought this was sacrilege. Um, yeah. But I'd never, ever considered what a book was made of. It had never crossed my mind that it was materials and paper. And that's when I just got the bug and I was fascinated. So, yeah, that was when I knew that was for me. I'd always been arts and craftsy growing up. So it just felt like arts and crafts for grown ups. Right. That sounds like a really good course. It was called Get Into Book Publishing. It still runs. Um, it's run by Heather O'Connell. And, yeah, I can highly recommend that. What about you, Evian? Did you always plan on being in the book industry and in this section? So in a funny sort of way, I kind of, when I was deciding what to decide to do in undergraduate, I was thinking about doing design as a foundation design, but didn't have the confidence at that time to pursue a design career. But I remember seeing book covers and always having a slight fascination and love for them and the process that went into them. And so I decided to do a dual kind of design or degree in publishing and law. And then that I kind of knew I perhaps wanted to work in publishing, but necessarily didn't know which field. And initially I thought I possibly could work in something such as contracts or rights that combines both aspects while I was studying. And then initially then thought marketing and slightly worked in production initially. So I kind of fell into that in a slightly weird way where I was applying for several publishing roles and was getting to the second round at various times, but wasn't getting a role in there. And so I remember just applying for a role at Borders UK, which was a bookshop at the time in the UK, which, which sold books, music, films, everything at one point. But they wanted a marketing assistant. And I thought it'd be a great way to perhaps gain experience within book pub or the book industry and to work there for a year and realise actually, even though the role was in marketing, it was actually utilising a lot of skills such as what Robin does in production. So in terms of doing specs, the organisation, costings, doing all the point of sale in the bookstore. And so initially worked in various production roles for over five years and then kind of slightly transitioned my way into studio manager role, which I have to say is slightly bespoke within the publishing industry, where in terms of, for example, in my role, there's just me as studio manager and most publishers will have just the one studio manager. So it's quite hard initially to get into, but for me having a slight great experience within both production and level cover design and interest in it kind of helped me progress into that role. Yeah, sounds like you found a really good good home for yourself. And it's nice to be across like many different bits, isn't it? Because you also interact with your different departments and that's really good. I think like for me, when you're working in the book industry, it's the coll collegiate thing of like working together because I kind of I have done stints of being completely freelance and working on my own, but, and I've made books pretty much on my own and but like being with a team and like working with the editors especially I've always really enjoyed yeah no I definitely enjoy it especially working quite close with designers so I have worked with a great team of designers who are both illustrators as well and so kind of gaining understanding of the process that goes into a book cover which at times might seem quite simple especially kind of if you look at the covers and 
moment in time, you might think, well, that's a very simple concept, but knowing how much work and involvement and kind of collaboration set Jack, working with the editors and various teams and production. So the production team, at times, the designers will consult even perhaps when the cover's briefed and the working cover and they perhaps want to work on slightly something slightly experimental, particularly on our sci-fi fantasy list. So they'll work quite closely with the production to understand what different finishes and how far they can push things along within the design. And so it's quite interesting working with them in terms of navigating and facilitating that. Well, I work at Anderson Press at the moment where I'm art director. I sit next to the production controller. So that's, that's really useful. We're always talking about different things and she's give me good advice all the way through. Um, and I've been a designer for maybe like 15 years, but I I too, I didn't know at the start what I was gonna be doing. I did a degree, but I did a maths degree. So it was all like completely unplanned in a way. And I ended up doing some cartoons to the student newspaper, which then got me into kind of design and learning about Photoshop and stuff like that, which then got me to graphic design a bit. And I tried to do that freelance. And um, but it was going into borders when I used to work in a design studio. I used to go into borders on the way. There's like my bus stop had to go. It was opposite of borders, and it was such a great shop for browsing. I had magazines, kids books, huge kids book section, and that's what really inspired me. Um, made me realise like how much, well, the kids books that I was seeing in there were really made me like. I was surprised at how kind of free and kind of fun they were. I wrote to Walker Books was like one company I was really interested in. I said, can I come and meet your like team or something? And they didn't reply. But then about a year later, they invited me to apply for a junior designer role, which is what I got and then ended up um, just kind of learned a lot on the job there as a junior designer and then went up to designer. And I've worked at um, Simon & Schuster and Little Tiger and Anderson before as well. Um, so it had been, for me, it's been quite roundabout way of doing it, but. I'm glad to be here. So covers and production seems like an important part of the industry. Do you think, um, what, what, what is the role of a cover? What is the role of design in a, in a book's life? I would say in terms of design, and I remember in terms of my buying habits when I was younger, I used to buy books simply by the cover. And so in terms of a genre, particularly literary section, I used to think to myself, how much work has been put into that beautiful cover, that must mean this is the most amazing book. And necessarily that might not always be the case, but I think for me, it's the first point of thing that kind of draws you in, especially if you're going into bookshop or online, the cover definitely stands out before you have read anything, particularly if it's a new author in their first book. I think covers is just understanding in terms of the importance of it is how much work as I mentioned before that goes into it and how many people are consulted in terms of the process in-house particularly and even at times with we work quite closely with the retailers as well so retailers might feedback particularly if they're certain markets that we might go into whether it be in description boxes so we might even produce special covers particularly for those markets as well so that might play into how covers produced. And what about authors? Do you consult with authors much? Again, it might vary. I mean, most book covers, they might kind of, as soon as it's approved in-house, so after covers been briefed, a designer and editor might work together initially on the cover design options. They might take it to our covers meeting where it gets sign off. When at the point of sign off, there are various stages if, where it gets to an author. If it's an author who's quite involved in their design or we have history with in terms of we work quite closely with them and they're quite a key brand author, we might even show them early visuals before it's even gone to a meeting. But most of the time it'll be going to the author as soon as signed off. The author will be quite key since it's their book, we have to make sure they're happy with it. So the author at times might come back and be, I love this cover, go ahead with it. And I want to face all about it, which is what we hope for most of the time. But at times it might come back with, feedback which is quite helpful in terms of ways suggestions we might make in terms of incorporating their narrative and what they envisioned into the cover at times it might be a case unfortunately of I don't feel this is the right cover so can you look at different approaches or as I mentioned before it might be a case of matching with different markets whether it's the US Australia different markets and what they're doing cover wise. It's always interesting, isn't it? Because everyone wants the same result. Everyone wants the, the book the cover to be the best it can be. And that's job is to kind of entice the reader, but also to represent the story. But when you're so close to the story, when it, the authors, often they've got a different, or they've got a very specific and honed over years view of what the story is all about. So sometimes 
we if we if we're not we're not doing a good job if we represent the story in a wrong way and sometimes there might be a feeling that certain people want different things out of the book like maybe a sales team might say it should look like something that's doing well in the market or something like that no absolutely and especially i think the story is and when it comes to underrepresented writers particularly now things have been changing i think there was a slight trend which i think we've now moving away from particularly for books with color right those characters of color where they particularly for black authors having silhouettes so we're now moving away from that and maybe look at representation how we can better represent those stories and those markets and so there's constantly discussions happening around what we do in terms of cover design and maybe looking at different markets that we might go into as well at times as you mentioned back jack previously netflix and what netflix is doing at times with their posters is something quite interesting and particularly within the commercial section of thrillers might play into how we kind of brief cover so rather than actually referencing another book cover to as a competition as a direct competitor we might be referencing a netflix program as something that we might actually use as an inspiration point we talked about the, that kind of thing of the hunger for ideas and being open to seeing different techniques and approaches in the world so that might be something that'd be good for a new member of the team. But what else would you look for if someone was to join the team? If you're if you're hiring a new team member, what are the important attributes? I think one important attribute is collaboration. <laughs> someone who wants to work within a team and an organisation to be quite collaborative and learn. And so, in terms of, it's kind of a mixture of wanting to bring new ideas as well. Someone who has, I think within the team that I work in particularly, I think there's around eight designers and each designer has different design interests or different interests that they might have. So they might have bring in different aspects to covers that we do, particularly on bigger authors where everyone in the design team might get a chance to work on it. So having different aesthetics and styles and influences is quite important and so making sure that at times we're not following slight kind of similar styles within the team but making sure that there's slightly differentiation that's quite key for our team so you might have one new title and lots of different designers will be pitching ideas at the same kind of time it's at times it happens for our bigger authors so or, or bigger lead titles so we're so one of the most recent examples was the latest Tom Hanks non-fiction -fic book that we're doing. So all the designers and the team worked on different approaches, which made, in a way, it was quite exciting for the editor as well, because that kind of gave a broad dreamer rather than just one designer working on it. It gave broad dreamer of everyone in that in, in our team working on the cover design. So there's different styles and aesthetics going into as well and different directions we could do. And that can work really well and it, it needs you to be open to, to the ideas you might have find a compromise and you might find a, a way that takes the best bits from different ideas and it can be quite interesting because it's like you're a artist but you're also kind of supplier in that you have to kind of it's not personal sometimes you'll be doing for the covers meeting you might do a dozen ideas or or more 30 40 and then you whittle them down and you kind of have to like kind of be prepared to eschew some of your ideas and in the meeting covers meeting which is normally sales team managing directors that everyone's got their own opinions and some of your ideas which you might be quite fond of will be re rejected and it's good if you can just like move on from that straight away because everyone is like looking to make the best possible cover so and I suppose Jack for you kind of it must be very different when you're the freelance where you're not sitting physically in that meeting but have a in-house or someone who's within the organization a designer working with you how does that input it where a designer might come back to you and say well this is feedback from the meeting that you didn't attend your key relationships with the designer who's kind of like your in-house representative and so they go to the meeting they take your covers roughs and they kind of they need to sh they'll, they'll display it and they'll have to show it and talk about it and and um you know i do the same for other illustrators and sometimes maybe they'll send an illustration and i'll like I'll show it and I'll also show a, a version where it pumped up colours or and then make the characters bigger or maybe even like I move the eyes so looking directly at the viewer or something like that because you can kind of start to predict some of the comments and then you can work out between you so it's very iterative you kind of it's not like there's one design it's just you can keep going through and through All right you Robin if you um what's important for your in your team if you're hiring a new person what would you look for 
Uh, I'd say the key thing is organisation. Um, you're juggling a lot of titles at one time. Uh, so in, in our team, we have our own imprint. So you do all the books within that imprint. Um, you need to be a problem solver. Uh, you need to always have the answer, even if you don't have the answer. I always like to reassure my editors, um, even if they come at me and they're like, I don't know what we're going to do. And I'm like, I know what we'll do. And they'll walk away and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I work it out. Um, I think that's a big part of it. It's just being that person that they can go to to fix things. Um, it feels like I change time sometimes because we give schedules and I have to give schedules with dates that aren't the real dates because I know that things happen so that the real date real dates don't get hit. Um, but I think there's you can learn all of the production knowledge, I think, on the job. And we've employed people that have never worked in publishing before. Um, I don't think you have to have a degree. I do have a um, an MA in publishing, but I couldn't seem to find any other route. I was the first person in my family to go to university and I just didn't know how to get there. But we've, we, impl uh, we do blind recruitment. Um, everybody answers the same questions and then you get to a certain round. But yeah, we employed somebody that had never worked in book publishing. She knew nothing about the publishing process, um, but she worked in museum curation and all of her interview answers, she could link back and it, she had all of the right skills. It was literally just filling in, okay, well, this is how a book's made and you can learn that and you can be guided with that, but you can't teach, you know, the confidence to ring up a supplier or a printer and say, I need this ASAP. What's your earliest date? You need to, you need to have built that, I think, already sometimes. So definitely confidence in speaking to third parties because we don't just work in-house. We don't just, we, I mean, we work with all the teams, which is a lot of people, sales, editorial, design, marketing, everybody. But we also have to work with the printers and the paper suppliers. So we're right in the middle. Um, and yeah, we have to be that bridge between everybody. So you have to be able to pick up the phone and make those make those phone calls sometimes. Yeah, I was really aware of that when I was saying I sit next to the production controller at Christmas. So last a few weeks ago, her, she was just like inundated by bits <laughs> and chocolates and stuff from around the world. Those are the Chinese suppliers, stuff like that. Yeah, and it's a good time of year in production. <laughs> people, yeah. So what advice would you give to someone then? Because it sounds like being organised and being confident is, is, is important in production. I would say when you're applying for any production roles, whether it be an assistant role or a controller or any of the more senior roles, whatever experience you have, just try and make it relevant to the skill that they're looking for. It's not necessarily, I know what paper to use on this book. It's that that can be learned on the job. It's it's using all of the skills that you've already got and learned and make and showing that they are transferable. Um, if you're fresh out of university, the fact that you've met deadlines and you've done assignments, that is an example of you meeting deadlines because you have to do that at work. So talk about that. Um, and I think for anything that you're trying to do in the book industry, I think there's there's two strands of thought. There's some people that, you know, are like throw yourself into anything and just get a foot in the door and you can do anything. And I, to an extent, I do agree, you know, get in there. But I think if you can find something that you think is a bit different or a bit niche um, and really hone that, when you come to interview, you it will come across. So I was so invested in production. I'd never worked in production, but I was fascinated by from dissecting this book that when I interviewed for an assistant role at HarperCollins, it was my first publishing role. Um, I honestly think my he's still my boss I think he was terrified to not give me the job because I was like oh, I'm obsessed with this book that you've done and I love the foiling and I just used all these buzzwords that I didn't necessarily know how foiling worked but I just had shown that I'd gone that extra mile to do a bit more research and shown it an eagerness I think um for that for that role yeah I mean that makes a lot of sense as someone who's going to be enthusiastic about publishing yeah the, the book industry yeah you can learn the other stuff but that's mm -hmm. invaluable and I think probably everyone we work with is a bit like that you know yeah you, the, the book industry chooses you to an extent because you just you start going into bookshops and you kind of get affected by them you really want to so are you super organized in your normal life as well <sighs> yeah I mean my colleagues like to make fun of me I've got a shelf next to my desk that if anybody even breathes near it everyone likes to make a joke but yeah I think yeah, it does come through being organised. You ha you have to be because you have to know where every book is at every stage. You've got some books that have just 
gone to be typeset so typed up into a pdf and you've got some book that's been stalled at the printer because the foiling has gone wrong or they found the wrong book and you need to know where everything is and how to problem solve so you have you have to know so that if somebody comes up to you and says where's this book you immediately know because it doesn't fill anybody with confidence if your production controller says i don't know yeah and evian what, what would you say for your department and your area what advice would you give to someone who's trying to get into it so design is slightly different where you in terms of there's an interview process of course as well but most designers even junior designers have to submit a portfolio so portfolio be kind of a sample of work and so I would say and actually kind of to say Jack how you kind of got into publishing is quite interesting where it's maths degree I would say now it just studying design isn't some preemptive or something that's requirement to get within design and going back to that as well I would say being able to draw or being technical drawer isn't something that's required as well so if you have a passion for design it's quite key just to show an interest and to show the particular styles that you have so if book publishing or the book industry is something that you want to work on design a key thing in the portfolio I would say is to design your own book covers so you might have read a book that you love just work on a book cover a few two or three book covers that you love and just reinterpret them completely, maybe doing your own style, something that you think might interest you and find ways to reinterpret that rather than, of course, having to put in, particularly as a junior designer, where you won't have any experience, but just making sure that you can show particular interest with book design. So I think that kind of is something that stands out in a portfolio where someone has designed their own book covers from scratch rather than just showing various design designed work where it's not clear which area that they're interested in, whether it's book publishing or branding or advertising. So I think making sure that's specific to our area is key. I think being quite, as Robin mentioned, quite eager and interested in particular publishing. So look at the book publisher that you're applying for, the books that they publish. So highlight two or three books that you love, the book cover design, so books that they've published and say, what you love about that cover design or even just the book itself the book that you've read that they've published and maybe just find a book to read that they've published and just finding an interest in what they publish and the areas that they publish in and just willingness to learn is quite key in the role and just again as mentioned previously being able to work collaboratively so showing eagerness that you'd want to learn from the teams because particularly within design it's a case of learning from other people within the team who have more experience is quite key so just showing willingness for that is, is quite important yeah the enthusiasm is so important and if you can find something to be enthusiastic in, in their list which is, is, is always going to be possible because you, the, the, the book covers if you are interested in them and get engaged with them and like how they're made and the job they're doing even if it's not your type of book they've all got a certain way of working and they kind of they've got to represent the book in the best possible way so i think if you can like think about them in a bit of an analytical way and also um similarly when you have your portfolio like present it so that you can it looks like it would be useful to the to the person who's going to employ you so like sometimes we get illustration submissions and they're all um maybe like you know moody black and white and we're looking for a children's book illustrator or something like that which uses color you just think about like how this could be useful to someone and try and make yourself as useful as possible but the developing portfolio with kind of um just concept pieces and stuff i mean i did that a lot and i was doing kind of children's book version covers of i remember they did like adult books like the road and i did to share pictures things on blogs and like social media and stuff like that and at one point i was trying to develop my illustration portfolio and i illustrated some um classics as as kids books just as a kind of development kind of experiment really just to kind of try it out but I didn't think it was going to be a book or anything I just wanted to try it but I shared them and then lots of people saw them and that's what got they actually turned into a book or a series of books so it's just like being able to being if you can make time to play and, and be free and then I think if you can share things as well people do see it and like it if you've got good ideas and I think having online presence I think maybe later on if someone is coming to apply for all it's quite important to have Instagram page sometimes where it might be helpful where in case of portfolio we might look at Instagram page at times just see what other work they might have done so just making sure that you can develop that at some point would something be quite useful as well and especially when we're 
finding people to freelance so necessarily in-house or working within a publisher isn't the only route working as freelance illustrator and design it might be something that might interest someone I would say a key thing is just having an online presence that's where the times where we find illustrators or designers to commission for cover so that would be something I'd say is quite key as well at the moment I think as well for people that are looking to get into the book industry social media is definitely your friend um because you can follow all of these designers editors who are not only posting jobs but they're just posting about their experience and I think that was something that I really noticed was lacking in book production so I started a Instagram around book production called prod squad books um prod squad uh so but I just wanted to show like clips of books at the printers and what foiling is and how end papers are applied and what head and tail bands are because this is all jargon that if you don't know what it is it's a it's an accessible way of doing it. I think that's why TikTok's really taken off in just in everyday life because you can look at visual examples of how to do things and I think that's a really good tool that future book industry professionals can really utilize if they just get in there and do some research. Yeah production is definitely one where like there are, there's some mystique about what happens and in the actual printers what goes on there it's so amazing I've been to visit a few times it's just like kind of Willy Wonka type. Yeah factory. it's the best place to be. <laughs> Head and tail bands, that's the kind of ribbons at the top of the, on the back of the book. Yeah, so we apply those to give the book, because what books used to traditionally more be sewn, you would get that strip of fabric at the top and the bottom anyway from where the books were sewn. But now most books are glued, you don't get it. So a way of creating that sort of classic vintage illusion, you can just literally glue a strip of fabric to the top and the bottom. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think uh, Prod Squad, that's one for me. <laughs> Well, I think that's all we've got time for today. Um, so thank you very much to Evian and to Robin for your brilliant insights into art design production. Um, and to say to everyone who's watching, if you'd like to find out more about careers in the book industry, make sure you check out Open Books online events and videos and the website publishers.org.uk forward slash open books. And also search the hashtag open books. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>